What's up developers, it's Dari here and I hope that you're having a great day because in this video we're going to talk about paddings and margins in Tailwind. Before we continue on, I want to quickly let you know that you can support the channel through Patreon where you can get access to my private Discord group where everyone is helping each other out with their coding issues. If you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. Most of you guys will be familiar with padding and margin in CSS, but before we dive into the code, let's actually go over it real quick. I've created the picture in Photoshop to showcase you what padding and margin is. So let me open it, right here. I know it doesn't look good, but it will showcase you what padding and borders and margins are. Margin and padding will be applied on your content. And in our case, Tailwind is awesome is the content. So let's imagine that it's an H1. Whenever you apply padding to an element, you're adding spacing around the content, but still inside the border of the element. Padding and margin can be added in four different directions. We got padding to the top, we got padding to the right, we got padding to the bottom, and we got padding to the left. In CSS and in Tailwind, you're allowed to specify padding directions separately, horizontally, vertically, or all together. But that's something that we'll discuss when we apply it in Tailwind. Outside of the padding, there's a border, and this is basically the edges around your padding. Then outside the content padding and border, you can apply margin, which is also spacing between certain elements. Just like padding, you can specify margin directions in the same exact way. If we navigate to the browser right now, go to Tailwind's website, and let's search for padding. Right here, you can see an entire list, well actually 245 classes that you can apply in order to manage your padding. I won't be going over all of them, otherwise the video will be hours and hours long, but I will tell you more about the class names and properties. So let me scroll up. As you can see in the class names, there's a pattern right here, since all classes start with the letter P, which obviously stands for padding. If we look at the properties of P-0, you can see that the padding has been set to 0 for every single direction, so to the top, right, bottom and left. Inside this list, you can see that the padding starts with 0.5, which will have a padding of 0.125 rem. So one padding, as you can see right here, stands for 0.25 rem. If we scroll down, you can see that the last number is P-96, which is a padding of 24 rem. After the P-96, you can see that the class names change up a little bit, since a new character has been added right here. Now this character defines the direction. Like I showed you in the picture, we got four directions. Top, right, bottom and left. But we could also apply padding horizontally and vertically. So if you're going to apply PY, you're going to add padding to the Y axis. So to the top and to the bottom of an element. If we scroll down, you can see that we could also apply PX right here. Padding to the X axis which will apply padding to the left and to the right of an element. And this goes up until you reach the size of 96 again. Next to the X and Y direction, you can see that we have PT, which is padding to the top. So you can style them individually as well. PR, so padding to the right. PB, padding to the bottom. And PL, so padding to the left. These work in the same exact way as the others that we just talked about. So I think it's time to test out padding inside our code and then move on to the margin. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's remove the div that we have right here. And let's actually remove the styling and the class that we added in our parent element. All right, inside our divs, let's create an H1 and let's say Tailwind. Inside our H1, let's create a class and let's give it a name of bg-red-500 for the background color. Let's change the text to dash white. Let's add a width of max, so width-max. If we save it, go back to Brave and look at our local host. Let me actually zoom in. You can see that Tailwind has been printed out with a red background color. The actual content and the borders are right next to each other. So what we could do right now is apply padding to it. Now let's start off by adding padding to every single direction. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's say that we want to set the P-4. So right now we're going to add one rem to all directions that we have. If we save it, 
navigate back to the browser, you can see that we added space inside the element. So we made the background color wider than it was. Let's say that you don't want to add padding to all directions, but only to the top and to the bottom. What we then need to do is to say P Y axis is equal to four. Save it, go back. And as you can see, there's no padding to the left or to the right of our element. I think that this is pretty straightforward. So let's talk about margins right now, since you've got a couple more options right there. If we navigate back to the browser, and let me actually zoom out, we're not going to work with padding anymore, but right to the left, you can see that we're going to work with margin. Now let me zoom in, all right. Now I think that most of these classes right now speak for itself, right? The M-1, dash two. The class that I want to talk about is the margin dash auto. So let's scroll down and search for it right here. What this allows you to do, and the reason why it is so powerful, is that you can center elements within the parent container. And to show this to you, we actually need to go back to Visual Studio Code. Now inside our parent element, so our first div, let's give it a class of bg-blue-500. And let's also set the height and width to full. So w-full and h-full. Save it, go back to the browser, refresh our local host. And as you can see, the background has been changed to blue, which is all right. Here comes the tricky part or the fun part. You don't want the content inside your parent container to be 100%. You don't want Tailwind to be aligned to the left, but let's say somewhere right here. What we could do is navigate back to Visual Studio Code and inside our div right below our parent element, let's give it a class. What you could do is adding a background color of BG-RED-500 to our child div, give it a height of full, but instead of giving it a width of 100% as the parent element, we're going to say that everything inside our child div has a width of w-4 forward slash 5, so 80%. If we save it, navigate back to the browser, you can see that 20% is still blue to the right. And that is correct since 4 forward slash 5 is 80% out of 100. What you usually want is to put your child div inside the middle. So you don't want to have 20% to the right, but you rather have 10% to the left and 10% to the right. To do that, we need to set the margin left and margin right to auto. And there's where the margin auto comes into play. Instead of saying m-auto, we're going to say margin x-auto. If we save it and navigate back to the browser, you can see that we indeed have divided the 20% to the left and to the right of our child element. Next to adding margin auto to the left and to the right, there's a class that will add margin auto to the top and to the bottom. But surprisingly, it has no effect. This needs to be fixed with alignments, which we will cover later on in this course. But let me still show you what goes wrong if we try it. If we navigate back to Visual Studio Code and replace height-full with height-4 forward slash 5, save it, go to Brave, you can see that we got 20% of space to the bottom. If we change our margin, if we change our mx-auto to margin-auto, so auto in every single direction, save it, refresh it, you can see that this does not work. Another pretty cool thing is that margin can be negative. What this will do is basically move an element closer to another. The only difference between a positive margin and a negative margin is the fact that you need to add a dash right in front of your class name. So let's do that. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code, and let's say that we want to add a dash ML, so margin left, of 20. If we save it, navigate back to the browser, you can see that even though we added a margin auto, our child element is still placed to the left since we added a negative margin of 20 to it. This was it for this video, where we went over the basics of padding and margin in Tailwind. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up, and if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button.